Well, I hope you've been doing fantastic. Can you hear me all right? Can you see me? Type a one if you can hear me. Type a two if you can see me as well. Hey, there we go. Cool. Thomas, you got to change your chat settings so that everyone can see it. Edith, you have to change your chat settings to everyone so that everyone can see it. I just got back from uh, <laughs> I just got back from a long, long road trip, like four hours there, overnight, and then four hours back to my grandma's ninety fifth birthday. Happy birthday, grandma! Yeah, she turned ninety five, and I actually I did something so cool. Uh, I got this idea from from Yelena. I don't know if if Yelena gave me the idea or I give the idea to Yelena. But I know Yelena and I talked about it a while ago, and Yelena's here right now, so show it, Yelena. Um, the idea, Yelena, do you remember what the idea was? So this is a really cool idea. What you want to do on your grandma's birthday, so if you're going to surprise her, is, you know, your grandma probably has like her her daughters and her sons going to see her, right? And she might not be expecting her grandkids. That was the case yesterday, last night. So sure enough, my mom was there, my uncle was there, my aunt was there. Everyone's like gathered around and she's all happy. She's like, oh, it's like that alone was like a surprise to her. Like, wow, you guys came up for my birthday. And then um, we show up to the restaurant, my cousins and I, all the kids. And we got the waiter to grab my phone and go and take a group photo of them. And we told the waiter, hey, take a group photo, distract them. We're going to come up behind, behind my grandma, take the picture and then show the picture to my grandma. So we'll surprise her by her looking at the picture because she doesn't know we're there. And so that's what happened. And it worked flawlessly. It was so good. And then when she looked at the picture, she was so confused. She's like, how did they do that? How, how, did, how did you do that? She was so confused. She thought it was like technology or something. And then she turned around and she's like, oh my God. And she like started crying like crazy because she hasn't seen us in a little while. And she's 95 and we're like a third of her age and she loves us. Um, it was cool. It was a really cool surprise. So I recommend if you can pull that off, it'll blow someone's mind. It's a really cool surprise tactic because they're not expecting it. <laughs> they're not expecting it. So there you go. Uh, but after a long, long road trip, my brain, I like just got home like an hour ago and then I'm setting stuff up here. So I'm a little, a little more tired than usual, but uh, we will and also late night afterwards, of course, grandma's birthday, you got to party hard with the cousins. Keep kept it sober. I was the only person at the party who didn't uh, drink anything. So there we go. No drinking, no smoking. I was offered everything. Kept it clean. And I still got to bed, I think, before 11. So pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, and what I realized, I also realized this. Uh, so I was hanging around a lot of people at the party. And everyone, like, after the party, they're on their phones a lot, right? And that's, you can be on your phone, whatever. But... If you're on your phone, like wasting time, you're wasting your life, right? And I realize when I'm on my phone a lot, I'm on my phone, but it's like business related. Like I'm texting like team members or I'm texting prospects or I'm test, uh, texting, you know, past clients or I'm creating content or I'm typing down ideas like notes, thoughts, or I might be doing some research on something that I might want to do in the future or something like it's always like, not always, but it's like, I'd say 80% of my time that I'm like spent on my phone is not wasted completely because it's going towards my business. I you can call it like productive procrastination, I guess, because I'm not like doing like hard work, but I'm still it's like work related. But I notice everyone else when they're on their phone, complete horseshit. It's just like the latest news and the latest TikTok and some stupid TikToks and some dumb YouTube shorts, just complete waste of time. And they spend, I say, I ask them how many hours you spend on that. They go at least a couple hours, like garbage, 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 garbage. So it was very, uh, once again, I've had, I've been eye opened many times in this regard, but it was eye opening once again, how easy it is to get ahead in life. If you don't distract yourself with stupid crap, you don't distract yourself. Yeah. Shell saying maybe that's because most people don't work for themselves. Exactly. But they could work for themselves if they spent all that time coming up with ideas and trying things and testing things. And rather than watching TikToks, making TikToks, right? They, they could shift that usage of time. 
And so, again, it's just a good reminder of how easy it really is. I, not, not necessarily how easy it is, but how little competition there is. There's so little competition. Most people driving down the streets, if you're stuck in a traffic jam, or if you go to the mall, you go to the beach, whatever, you see thousands of people, most people don't even have a freaking clue where to begin with getting started online. They're not a clue. They, no, back up. They don't even know that it's possible to get started online with their own membership or community or a coaching program or course. They don't even know that's possible. If they do know it's possible, they don't believe they can do it. If they do believe they can do it. They don't have a freaking clue where to begin. So if you guys are in this Zoom room right now, you probably, well, you obviously know that it's possible to do it. You probably believe that you can do it. And you probably know where to begin. You've already begun. I know. In fact, everyone, you've already begun. It's just now a matter of like, how do you optimize every step you take going forward? Right? That's what it comes down to. How do you optimize every step you take going forward to the best of your ability? And how do you stay in momentum and continuously see progress? So today we're going to talk about how to make a really good income without needing to sell anything. And I've never done a workshop like this before because in the past I've always taught you how to sell this, how to sell that. But I decided to flip the script here tonight and share with you how you can make income without selling. It might sound weird, uh, but you'll see how it's possible. Type a five in the chat if that's exactly why you're here. You want to be able to make income without selling. Okay, cool. Now... Without thinking too much, I don't, not at all. I should do without thinking at all. Just type the first word that comes into your mind when you hear the word sales. What do you associate it with? Oh no, says Jungsu. Jungsu, what's up? Uh, user, work, money, stress, ick, pursue, service, work, money, money. Okay, yeah. So, value, uh, uh, they asked this question to like thousands of people across the board. You guys are like a different audience because you guys are like, you know, a lot of you have something to sell and you already, you've already like broken some limiting beliefs that you probably used to have about sales. But most people, when asked that question, they're asked like, what word comes to mind and what do you, what can you visualize? And it's usually not nice. It's, it's like that ick that um, Thomas said, it's like, gross. It feels sleazy. They pitch like a used car salesman. It feels like corrupt almost. It feels like stealing. It feels wrong. So we're saying it's painful, right? So although none of those things are necessarily true, that's just how we, some of us perceive sales. And so rather than me trying to be all like Grant Cardone and tell you sales is cool, sales is awesome, sales, 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 I'm like, okay, what if I just go along with that narrative and say, okay, you want to make money, but you don't want to sell? Cool, let's do it. Let's make money without selling because it's possible. And I'm going to show you how to do that tonight. I'm super, super stoked to do that. So before we get into everything, I will show you the agenda. I'll show you the agenda. Oh, by the way, pop, uh, not a pop quiz, but let's do a poll. Let's do a poll. You guys are going to determine the future here. Would you rather split tonight or split today up into two sessions? We do some today, some tomorrow. So we'll go for like the next hour or two today, and then we'll do another hour or two tomorrow. Would you rather do that? Say yes. And if you'd rather just do it all tonight, say no. What are the, what's the poll? I think I can do an actual poll on here. Is there an option for that? Someone's saying yes. Uh, I don't, now I don't know if you're saying yes to the poll or yes to doing it apps. Oh, poll. I can do a poll. Create a poll. Watch this. Okay, let's try this out. Okay. Um, all, oh, it's going to be called all or split choice. This is going to be split. And all today split boom okay there's a poll launch the poll go the poll is up hey this is cool this is really cool i'm gonna do this more often 
I love Pulse. Wow. Split's killing it. Okay, I think we're going to split it. This is great. Okay, uh, split's at 75% right now. This is so cool. Okay, thanks for voting. Yeah. All right, we're going to split. Cool. That's that's what I had planned anyway. All right, cool. I am, as it, who, type, a, type a six if you've never been to one of my workshops before. Type a 99999 if you've been to a lot of my workshops. Thomas, you've never been to one. You know, Pre, never been to one. Stephanie, you've never been to one. Okay, well, a lot of you have. Okay, so for those of you who've been to some of my workshops before, you know that I don't know how long these take. I don't like sit there and calculate, okay, if I say this many words, it can take this long. Like, I have no idea. So I'm going to try to wrap everything up today within an hour and a half, an hour, and then leave some time for Q&A at the end. Cool? Maybe even less. We'll see. Okay, cool. That poll feature, freaking awesome. I'm going to use that a lot more in the future. Okay. Also, the other thing, if you've never, never been to one of my workshops before, I usually never do them at this time. I only do it at this time because grandma's birthday. Normally, I would do them many hours ago. Cool. Okay. So let's get into the agenda. Here it is. Boom. And by the way, thanks, uh, thanks so much, guys, for spending your Saturday night with me. I, I always... Um, I always, I always hear Yelena complaining about, oh, I got to work on weekends. And now that I'm hosting a party on Saturday, Yelena's like, oh, I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Zoom party. I'll be there. Yeah, so she doesn't like to work on weekends, but she'll happily just tune in for the party. Cool. So here's the agenda. We're going to go through understanding the power of community, because if you don't understand this, you're probably going to overlook it like a lot of people. You're going to understand, or I'm going to help you understand the big picture of how to actually make 510k a month without selling anything. I'm going to help you pick your community topic. I'm going to help you zone in. I think it should be like honing in, right? Honing in on a niche. And then the best platform, in my opinion, to host a community. A lot of you guys might already know the answer to that, but I'll explain why it's so good. And then acquiring new members. And if you don't have a big audience or an audience at all, no problem. I can still show you how to acquire new members right so that's that and then tomorrow well, this is today i should say and then tomorrow this is rough but based on what i think now we'll go over retention tactics for actually keeping the members that are paying we'll talk about how to manage your community without a ton of time or content because i talked to a lot of people and like oh i don't want to start a community it's going to take too much time it's going to require too much content in fact type a one in the chat if you used to think that or currently think that it's managing a community is going to take a lot of time or content. Stuart thought that or thinks that. Okay, cool. Well, a lot of you. Yeah, we'll show you how that's definitely not the case. And then how to get your first 10 paying members. In fact, we just got someone. Uh, shout out uh, Gary. Gary's at 10 freaking members, man. Look at that. Boom. And what do you start with? First, he goes first too. Bam. Look at that. Starts with two, gets to 10. It's just, you climb, he has 11 now, so he's saying. You just, you climb, right? Guess, if he keeps this up, guess where he's going to be in, guess where he's going to be in a year or two, right? It just adds up, it compounds. And so tomorrow we'll also go over the roadmap to how do you actually get your first 200 members in 365. Now, guys, let's do some math here. If you... If you have uh, a member, a community, and the community is, and again, I'll show you how to do this without selling it. Don't worry. Let's say your community is fifty bucks a month, right? And you get two hundred members. How much money is that per month? Stephanie, that's incorrect. Uh, Lucy, that's incorrect. Oh, you can't. Can you not see my screen? Surely you can see my screen. You can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Not the um, math crowd tonight, I suppose. Yeah. It's 10K. Way to go, Thomas. After two minutes. Uh, yeah. So 
five times two is 10. And uh, yeah, you add some zeros on there, boom. So you're looking at about 10K a month. Boom. 10K a month. 10K a month. So yeah, Shell, good, good one. It's late, it's late. Mm, 10K a month, pretty sweet. I, we, when we drove to my um, grandma's party, she's like four hours away in the middle of nowhere. I asked one of my cousins, I was like, bro, would you move here? He's like, no way, this place sucks. And I was like, all right, well, what if, would you move here if your work paid you 10K a month to like do some computer admin work? And he's like, oh, for sure. I was like, really? You'd move here for 10K a month? He's like, for sure. He's like, he's like, I don't care. I'll just work here for a couple months. I'd save up like, or a couple of years. I'd save up like, you know, 240 grand. Then I could go like buy anything I want. So he's willing to like relocate for 10K a month. Would, would type a yes if you'd be willing to relocate for 10K a month. So wants to guarantee you pay 10K a month. You, would, you, would you relocate for that kind of income? Okay, so for everyone who's saying yeah, or depends where, good news is you don't need to. You don't need to relocate. It's this idea you have in your head, maybe, that you need to relocate, because that's what we've been raised to believe. Like, oh, you should, you should go up north and make some money. It's like, you should go to the oil rigs and make some money, or you should go down south to make some money, or you should go in the forest and pick mushrooms and make some money. So you don't need to go anywhere nowadays. You do it all from your laptop. Cool. So um, this is just one calculation, but if you like, just want to cut it in half, you can either charge 25 a month and then make a 5K, which I probably wouldn't recommend because inside secret here, guys, we did some research and we found those who are willing to pay 25 are actually also willing to pay 50. Boom. So if we change it, now it's more like, okay, let's get 100 members. Probably a lot faster. Takes maybe half the amount of time. Boom. 10K a month. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Back up. 5K a month. There you go. Cool. So this, for a lot of people I know, is like a lot more realistic. But if you keep doing what Gary's been doing, you keep adding up, but eventually it adds up. It compounds. Okay? And this is... This is why I think a lot of people underestimate the power of community. Say underestimating the, uh, understanding the power of community and monthly recurring revenue. So monthly recurring revenue, it, it allows you to, well, I'll just tell you a story to illustrate this point here. This is, this is the power of community and monthly recurring revenue. When I was making the most money that I ever made, I'm not saying what I want to say to brag or to flex. I'm just giving you context. Okay. The most I ever made in a month was a hundred grand, just over a hundred grand. And then in the months leading up to that, I was making like 70 grand, 80 grand, 90 grand, and then a hundred grand. And I kid you not, I'd never been more stressed in my life. I was so stressed out because I had to make so many sales, 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 sales. I had no monthly recurring revenue at all. So that month I made 70 grand. The next month I started at zero. Then we made 80 grand. The next month I started at zero. And every month he started at zero. And I was like, oh my God, like I got to try and beat last month. And I did for a while. I went from like 70, 80, 90. Then we got 100. And I was like so burnt out at that point. I was like, I give up. I quit. I can't do this anymore. I was like so stressed out. And then miracle happened. My Facebook ad account got shut down. We got banned from Facebook ads for no reason. Well, I know I was a dumb reason. And I couldn't make big money anymore. And so I was like, shit, what do I do? Like I went from making all this money to now hardly making anything. And then I looked at, because I couldn't run ads anymore. And that was the only way I knew how to make money, run ads, but I couldn't do it now. So I looked at my income statement the next month and I realized that, wow, I'm actually, I'm actually making some, some money off of um, some payment plans people were on. Because people were on like a you know, $2,000 a month payment plans at the time or even $1,000 a month payment plans back when you used to offer that. And then I also realized that people were, were still paying 20 bucks a month for this little monthly membership thing that I launched, you know, like a, a, almost a year ago at that point with, with a friend of mine. And I'm like, wow, this, this money's actually still coming in and I'm not even doing anything. That's really cool. 
And then it, it dawned on me that, wow, if rather than starting every month at zero and having to build up again, and after every sale I make looking for the next one, what if I just offered what I teach now? What if I just offered it at a monthly price and got people to pay every month? And then I could just stack and add and add and add and add people. So the first month, let's say I have 10 people paying 50 bucks a month. That's how much per month? Post in the chat, you math nerds. 10 times 50 bucks is 500 bucks. And the next month, what if I double that? How much am I making then? Thousand bucks. Yeah. And then, trick question, if I then double that, not double that again, but if I add another 10 people, how many am I making? Did I say 10? Yeah, 10 times 50. Another 10. No, Jennifer fell for the trick. It's 1,500. Yeah, good, Yelena. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, holy smokes, if I just keep adding and stacking, that that's incredible. So what ended up happening was I did that, long story short, and... I kid you not, the month that I hit 100 members paying 50 bucks a month, the month I was making 5K a month, just from recurring, I was so much happier making, this sounds so weird I'm about to say, but I was much happier, far less stressed, making 5K a month recurring than I was making 70, 80, 90K, 100K without the recurring way less stressed, way happier, making 5k a month recurring. It was so weird. It's so weird. Cause you think, well, but, but Ted, that makes no sense. Like logically, and you're right. Logically, it doesn't make sense. Logically, if someone were to give you hundred grand, you should be like, wow, I'm set for like 10 of those 5k months, you know, like hundred grand equals like 10 of those 20 of those 5k months, hundred K equals 20 of those 5k months. Right. 20 months, but, but, but it's not recurring. And so the fact that it like ends and you have to start again, every time you make a sale, it can very bothersome and very stressful. And I found that I was going through like this feast and famine. Like I'd feast, I'd make a big sale. And then I'd be like, okay, where's the next sale? Type of one, if you've ever experienced that, you make a sale and you're like, okay, well, where's the next one? And you just constantly look for the next one. It sucks. It's so shitty. And yeah, it pays the bills and I don't want to like sound like I'm complaining because, you know, life's good when you make a lot of money, like on a, on a big sale. And I recommend everyone has a high ticket product, but that's another workshop altogether. In fact, the last workshop I hosted was how to create a high ticket offer because I love high ticket programs. They're freaking awesome. They pay the bills. They, they can buy you your dream house, your dream car, whatever. But if you just have that, if you just have high ticket, and you don't have any monthly recurring because you don't have a community. You're going to be stressed. It's just all there is to it. Like, and everyone I know who's done it like that has who's just did high ticket. They become very, very stressed. So if we come back to our agenda here, the power of community monthly recurring revenue is you can, you're stress-free. You have reliable income coming in and it compounds, compound growth. It keeps adding on each other, adding on each other, adding on each other. So if Gary, we know Gary's at 11 members now over the past, I don't know, month or so, where's he going to be in like five years? Maybe he's at a thousand members. You got a thousand people paying you 50 bucks a month. How much is that? Let's, let's fast forward. Like, you know, five years, thousand people paying 50 bucks a month. How much is that? 50 grand every single month. And the other beautiful part about this is it is very safe. It's very safe because if let's say of those thousand people Gary's working with every month or, or in his community, let's say a hundred of them decide, um, you know, they don't want to do this thing anymore or they get spooked. They get caught into the next trend or whatever. If he loses a hundred people, he sells 900 people paying him 50 bucks a month, you know? So you're not just reliant on a small amount of people. You've got a lot of people with income coming in. So, yeah. Uh, Shell saying, in your experience, said you need a larger team, more cost when you do big sales. 
Uh, so that's a good question for the Q and A show. We'll definitely get to that. Put that in the Q and A a box. There's a Q and A box. That's that that one will definitely. Um, I'll, I'd love to dive into that one. So, share my screen. Safe. In terms of understanding the the big picture of making five tank came without selling, the way to do it without selling. Here's the kicker. There's there's two pieces to it. Number one. You must offer a free trial. Now, I used to work at a gym. I helped launch a gym. And I had no clue what I was doing. I just did what I was told. Those were my very, very, very first jobs. And they gave away, they gave us a big stack of these uh, coupons that said like free 30-day trial for the gym. It was a beautiful gym. Good life fitness. I think Darlene goes there, actually. I helped launch that, Darlene. Uh, and I walked around giving away these 30-day free trials. We all got paired up with a buddy, and we walked around town giving out these 30-day free trials. We handed out thousands of those things. Only now, looking back, did I realize how much money we made that company. I didn't even know I was selling anything because I wasn't. I was giving away a free 30-day trial. Type agree in the chat if you agree that giving away a free 30-day trial is not selling. Yeah, you're literally giving away a free 30-day trial. How is that? It's not selling anything. You're just giving it away. At the end of that 30 days, if they decide to, to, to continue paying or if they decide to upgrade to a membership or whatever, um, then cool. Like That's all on them. But my job is just give away the free trial. So we did. I gave away thousands of those. And other people gave away thousands of those. And wow, we must have got made that company so much freaking money. And like, what a strategy, right? And uh, Stephanie's saying, does it have to be 30 days? No, absolutely not. This, this, f- follow the logic here. If giving away a 30-day trial is not considered sales, is giving away a 29-day trial? No, still not sales. 29 days. Okay, what if you made 28 days? Still not sales. 27, still not sales. You follow that logic all the way down to giving away a one-day trial. Is that sales? No, it's closer to being a sale, but it's not a sale. You're giving away a free trial. But it's very close. So it's almost too close to being a sale that I wouldn't even do that. But I like as low as seven-day. I'd go as low as a seven-day trial. Seven to 14-day, I think, is a sweet spot. I don't know if you ever need to give away a 30-day trial. That's It's a big, big, big trial. I wouldn't recommend it, but yeah. So that's the first thing you got to understand. That's the first like big picture aha moment you've got to understand is just give away a free trial and you don't just feel like you're selling anything because you're not. It's free. Number two is that once people start paying, once people upgrade to pay, they pay monthly on autopilot. Now, Type again, type agree if you agree with the statement that if someone, let's say someone pays you this month, right? And then their card gets automatically charged 30 days from now again, and 30 days now again, and 30 days again. Did you have to make those three sales, those three subsequent sales? No, no. So so, so you would agree that that's, that you're not selling, right? If someone just automatically gets charged. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's it. So those are the two things to understand. If you just give away a free trial and let someone's card get automatically charged every month, you're not selling. And as we looked at before, if you get, let's say you create a $50 a month offer and you get 200 people doing that, you're now at 10K a month without selling anything. It's incredible. It's such a cool feeling. It's such a cool feeling. It's hard to put it into words because you're getting paid for giving someone something for free. What? It sure doesn't happen immediately. In fact, sometimes it does happen immediately though. This is what's really weird. Sometimes it does happen immediately. Okay, this is where it's like, this is where there's some gray zone. So we have a, uh, in fact, a lot of you guys may have signed up for this, but I'll show it to you. We have a landing page right here. And this is where I send people to get our free uh, seven day trial.
Boom, this is a landing page for contentpreneurs. They click here to get started. They put their name and uh, boom, 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 put their name and phone number in. They start the trial. It's uh, free for seven, seven days. And then there's a $47 a month charge every month. Now, again, you said you'd agree that this is not selling people, boom. But here's what's interesting. This is what's called a bump sell. And this, you can set this price to be whatever you want. It's, I said to be 14, I can't zoom in right now. I said it to be $14. Let me, let me plug this in one sec. Boom. So if they click this button and then they complete the purchase, that $14 gets charged instantly. I, but I just realized now as I'm telling you this, this, even this, I can set to be a 14 day trial. This doesn't even need to charge them right away. This could charge them later. I just happen to charge it right away. But what's cool is that they're buying that without me ever even mentioning it. Like, yeah, it's on the website, but I never even mentioned it in conversation or in the promotion or anything. All I said was, Hey, got this cool membership, kind of entrepreneurs, it's free trial. And that's just 47 bucks a month. If they click this and they decide that they want this $14 thing, that's on them, right? And so we actually make like at least a hundred bucks a month or something for, just from this. I know it's minor, but it's something. You know, it pays the cell phone bill. Uh, so that's an interesting tactic as well, if you, if you will, uh, for like increasing a small amount of profit and making some money right away for promoting something for free. So, but again, it's a weird feeling because you, you, all you're doing is promoting free stuff and somehow you're getting paid. I think it's, I think it's fascinating because everyone tries to tell you, oh, here's how to sell, here's how to sell, here's how to sell stuff. And it's like, what if you didn't even study sales and you just studied how to give away stuff for free and the free stuff was so good that people were willing to pay for it a few days later? That's awesome. That's so, it feels so refreshing. Would you guys agree? That you don't need to sell. It's just focus. How do I give away something so good for free that they're willing to pay for it a couple days later, seven days later, 14 days later, right? That's pretty sweet. So that's what we're going to be getting into. This is why I want you to really understand the power of this. Yeah. Uh, let me just back up to a little bit because I talked about the power of community. I didn't talk about that too much though. I want to say the difference between community and an audience. Cause a lot of people know the power of like having a social media audience and yeah, it's definitely powerful, but who knows the YouTuber? I know Yelena knows this YouTuber. Who knows the YouTuber Steve will do it. Steve will do it. Anyone know this guy? Very, very famous YouTuber. Those of you who don't know him, he was extremely generous on YouTube. And kind of controversial, but extremely generous. He gave away, he was close with like Trump and he's close with, with all the top, top famous people, I guess, if you will. But he gave away so much free stuff. He gave, like, this is like classic. He'd give away car teslas and cars and lamborghinis and thousands of dollars to poor people and parents and moms just tens of thousands of dollars, boom boom just give 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 away he gave away like 90 i don't know 90 percent of his net worth just give it away give it away give it away on youtube and then uh, he grew a massive audience keyword audience on youtube then he woke up one day with an email from youtube saying your account has been deleted terminal term term permanently deleted permanently terminated and you can't get it back and he was like rocked. He couldn't believe it. He spent years building up his audience and every single video, the reason he went so viral was because every single video he gave away so much stuff. That's what made him so viral. He just gave away so much money. And YouTube deleted his account for no reason. Oh, the reason was that on one of the videos, he was sharing his screen. This is so dumb, but this is the reason they gave him. He was sharing his screen like I've been sharing my screen here. And one of the tabs, like this is a tab, so he was just become a content printer here at the top. One of the tabs was like this gambling site. And 
YouTube said you can't be promoting gambling, these gambling sites on, on YouTube. That's against our policy. So they deleted his entire account for that. Point is, overnight, he lost his entire audience. And he had like millions of people, but that poof, they're all gone. Now he's no way of reaching them. He's no way of contacting them. Now, if, thankfully, he like had other ways of making money, so he didn't really rely on them for making money. Although they did help make a lot of money. But for, I know a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of you guys, your audience members are like the only way you make money. Type of one in the chat if you make money from your audience or if you know how to make money from your audience. Yeah. Edith, Stuart, Shell, Yelena. Yeah. Okay. So now imagine overnight, uh, it's happened to Edith. Edith had an Instagram. I don't know how many followers, but like thousands of followers on Instagram. All of a sudden, poof, gone overnight. No more Instagram. 17,000 Instagram followers. Do you know how much money you can make with 17,000 Instagram followers? You make a lot of freaking money if you know what you're doing. Poof, gone. Doesn't have anymore. For no apparent reason. Maybe got hacked, maybe got banned, whatever. It doesn't, doesn't even matter. It's just gone. Now, that's why an audience is so fragile. Whereas a community is rock solid. Because you own your community. Whereas an audience, you're renting that. You, Edith, doesn't, Edith didn't own those 17,000 followers. Instagram owned them. Edith was renting them. She was just borrowing them for a bit. Steve will do it. He didn't have, he didn't own the millions of subscribers. YouTube owned them. He was just renting. He was just borrowing for a bit. Yeah. So that audience, or sorry, that attention, attention is very, very valuable. And if you're constantly renting and borrowing it and you don't own it, all of a sudden overnight it can be gone. But with a community, wow, you own that. And the other thing too is, if algorithms change or you get shadow banned and all of a sudden your content isn't getting much attention now because you got shadow banned for some reason, nothing you can do about it because the algorithms changed. But in the community, you get a hundred percent delivery rate. So when I post on Instagram, it's like less than 10% of my people see my Instagram, less than 10%. If I post on YouTube, I got like 30,000 followers. I maybe get like a thousand views or something. I have 30,000 followers, I get 1,000 views. But in this, uh, in, my, in my community, if I make a post, I make a post here, I go bam, bam. And if I want everyone to see it, I just go send email to all members and boom, everyone sees it. Goes to everyone's inbox. 346 people, boom, will see this. They might not click and interact with it, but they'll see it. So powerful. Way higher response rate, well, rate way higher delivery rate. So those are a couple of the key pieces to why you really, 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 really need a community versus just a, a, an audience. And the, other, and the final piece I'll talk about here is if you just have an audience, like on social media, how are people going to interact with each other? In your comment section? That's pretty weak. In your freaking comment section, you, used to, you think you want to grow a movement, and you want to have like this online community without actually having a community. You just want to use like the Instagram chat and their Instagram chats and Instagram comments, Facebook feed. How are, how are you going to like build momentum with stuff? You know, how are you going to like be a leader? How could you possibly be a leader? All you have is a bunch of like just people in your audience. There's no real movement happening, but if you have a community, they're off of social media. It's a quiet place. People can chat. They can hang out. They can interact with each other. They can learn. And then they can all give credit to the community owner. Like I've met some amazing people in WeTube. This is a community here on school. I met some amazing people here. And I give credit to Sam. He's the owner of, of this particular community. And it's like if he didn't create this community, I wouldn't have been able to have this, this interaction with this, this person. So, yeah. And this, Happens in real life too. Like my friend, Mike, he hosted the Woodstock Fruit Festival. He was the owner of this for like a decade. In person, in person community. And I met some amazing people at the Woodstock Fruit Fest. And uh, I give all the credit to Mike. In fact, everyone does. Everyone in this community is like, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Because he created this in-person event. 
Now, Mike was able to get over 600 people in person to his community. And each of these people paid like over a thousand bucks, close to two grand even. So if Mike's able to get like 600 people to pay two grand to show up to freaking upstate New York, do you guys think you could maybe get like eventually like 500 people into your community online? So you don't have to fly, don't have to drive somewhere? Definitely. People love to gather. People love to connect. And you can do both. You know, you can do both. You can, in fact, it's so much easier. In fact, uh, it's much easier to do an in-person event like this when you have an in-person uh, online community. Much easier to do an in-person event when you first have an online community. So the way this kicked off was there was an online community. This is where I met a lot of really, really cool people. It's called 30bananasaday.com. It's an online community. I don't know if it still exists. Looks like it doesn't, but let's go to 30 minutes a day dot just on here. Images. You can see his online community right here. This is what it looked like. So retro. I wish it still existed. Nope. I uh, can't really see any good stuff here, but it was this form, this chat form. And there's like thousands of people on there who are all interested in eating more bananas. Helping, yeah, helping people become a low-fat raw vegan. It was run by Harley and Freely. And after a couple of years, Mike was like, wow, this online community is so solid. People are so dope. And they're so steadfast on this mission that I want to turn this into like a real event, a real person, in-person event. So we asked Harley and Freely if he could promote on their website instead of course, because they were friends with Mike at the time, because Mike was like one of the, leaders in the community. So what happens in a community, unlike an audience social media, people can rise to the top. Like in WeTube, I rose to the top. I'm like rank three. And so, uh, and it's a perfect example here too, in school. Leaderboard, I rose to the top. And then I got invited to go hang out with Sam, the owner, in person. And so on three minutes a day, Mike Arnstein rose to the top and then asked Harley and Freely if he could do an in-person event. They said, yeah. He promoted it, and over 200 people showed up to the first ever Woodstock Fruit Fest. It was 180 people. Yeah. Woodstock Fruit Fest. So that all happened because of an online community first. So much easier. Type a five in the chat if you one day want to host your own in-person retreat. How freaking fun would that be? They're the best. They're so fun. I've done, uh, I've hosted fruit festivals before with like 200 plus people. And I've hosted retreats with like five to 10 people. Here's what I prefer. I prefer hosting the retreats, but I prefer going to the uh, festivals. I think, have I ever gone to a retreat? I've never gone to a retreat. I've never been a retreat member as far as I can recall. I've hosted retreats. And I love that. But I've, and I've gone to festivals and I've hosted festivals. But hosting a festival is too much stress. I don't recommend it. Hosting a retreat, no stress. Very little stress. And so fun. Lucy said, did in the past. Awesome. Yeah, retreats are freaking amazing. Uh, but guys, if you have online community, you know, easy it would be to then say, hey, you're, this community is freaking awesome. Who wants to meet up in person this summer? Or who wants to meet up in person? Maybe you have a skiing community. Who wants to meet up this winter and go ski some slopes? Go ski some steeps. That'd be so easy. The community's already there. And retreats, are, you can charge like two, three grand a pop. So anyways, we're getting off track a little bit. But point is, that's the power of community. Did I make my point clear? Yes or no? Are you sold on communities yet? I hope. Yeah, cool. See, sold. All right, good. Yeah, it's very important that you first understand why we're talking about communities and then we can really, really dive into them. So we understand that. We understand monthly recurring revenue, why that's awesome. You understand the big picture of how to actually do it without selling. Um, let me get, dive a bit back into this now. In terms of the flow, in terms of the actual flow of how to actually do this, Here's how it goes down usually. There's three, there's three phases. You have phase one, 
Phase two. And phase, take a guess, three. Phase one is what I call the setup. Phase two is called uh, the operations. And phase three is called the delegations. So let's pretend we're going to set up our, uh, let's pretend we're going to set up a freaking um, railroad, okay? You've got, you got to set up the railroad. You got to, you got to pick the land. You got to get all the materials. You got to uh, buy the land. You got to get like legal rights to freaking set up your railroad through this property. The setup is like enormous. And I don't think it can ever really be done again unless it's like a brand new country, which is why whoever owns a railroad, my God, they're going to be rich for life. The setup is incredibly difficult and it's usually like a one-time thing for railroads, but you understand the setup is very, 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 very freaking difficult. Operating a railroad, once it's set up, I mean, it's probably not that difficult once someone teaches you how to do it, right? Once they say, hey, here's what you got to do every morning from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., go through this checklist, do all this stuff. Once you're taught how to operate a railroad, I'm sure you can do it. And phase three is you do what that person just told you to do. You teach someone else how to do the nine to five stuff. See what I mean? So you delegate all the stuff that person just taught you how to do. Once you've mastered it, okay, now you delegate it. And you move up to management and then you manage the person who's doing it. So it's delegation slash management, if you will. Okay. You guys with me so far? You might be wondering, why is he talking about setting up a freaking railroad? Because the same applies to a community. You've got to set up the community in the first place, which we'll get into. Talk about that in just a sec here. You got to set it up. And that is where most people, no, oh, don't want to do it. You can't look at it too confusing, way too hard. And I understand that. I totally understand that. In fact, I don't know if any of you guys are into crypto. I'm very, very much into crypto. Here's my um, Nano Ledger hard wallet right here. You know how difficult it was for me to get into crypto, try to figure this stuff out? Any, are any of you guys in crypto? Type a two if you're in crypto. Type a five if you're not in crypto. Type a 10 if you're going to be in crypto. Oh, cool. A few of you guys are. Oh, cool. A lot of you guys are in crypto. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, if you're not, you will be very, very soon. When I say crypto, I mean Bitcoin. The rest is a freaking distraction. Uh, you know how freaking hard it was to get into crypto or get into Bitcoin, like so confusing. Most people uh, don't even have a clue. My cousin called me the other day and he needed some, need me to wire him some money. And I said, dude, why am I wiring you money? Why don't I just send you some Bitcoin? He's like, I can't do Bitcoin, can't do crypto, can't figure it out. And he wasn't even willing to learn. And, and I, 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 I understood because I was there. I was at his stage at one point. I had no idea how to do it either. But it got to a point where I was like, okay, I need to learn. I need to figure this out. But the setup, man, the setup is just so overwhelming. It's so confusing. Not just because you have to figure it out by yourself, but because there's so many people giving you conflicting information. In fact, when you guys all first went vegan or raw vegan, I'm sure you heard so much conflicting information. And if you didn't see conflicting information, you saw conflicting information, meaning you saw someone freaking putting, uh, let's see, you saw somebody mixing Oh, they're blending up dates with almonds. And you're like, that sounds so good. I'm going to blend up dates with almonds. And then you do it and you're like, oh, I feel like crap. What do I feel like crap? I can't do this fruit diet. And someone else is like, dude, you can't blend dates with almonds. That's insane. You can't mix fat with sugar. What are you doing? Stop mixing fat with sugar. That's not good. And then you stop mixing fat with sugar and you feel way better instantly. You're like, oh, that's way better. But then you see these cook fooders and they're mixing like rice with guacamole. And you're like, oh, but I love sushi. And sushi has got rice and guacamole. And how come that's fine? How come these people who have to be 100 years old are eating sushi with rice and guacamole? You know, how come they can be 100 and do it? And it's just so much conflicting information out there, right? Like someone can be succeeding doing the thing that you were just told not to do. You know? Or it's like someone says, don't do the stock market. Meanwhile, Warren Buffett's like, worth like $10 billion or something, $100 billion. Someone's like, don't do crypto. Meanwhile, someone's making like $100 million of crypto. Well, there's so much conflicting information out there with business as well. So the setup, I totally understand, can be very, very confusing. But 
that's why I'm trying to teach what I teach to really freaking simplify this stuff for you guys. And, and if you've gone through the, the, uh, the program, instead of content entrepreneurs, I'm going to even go through it again and simplify it further, but I've tried to make it as simple as freaking possible. So, so simple. I even made an even simpler version of content entrepreneurship, which is the free community. If you guys haven't gone through this, go through this. This is a, uh, even simpler version. Step one, step two, step three, step four. Go through this stuff. It's, it's, I try to make it as simple as possible. So that's phase one, the setup. Type setup if you're in this phase right now. You don't have your community yet, but you're ready to set it up. Setup, setup. Okay. Setup. All right. A few of you. It's phase two. Daily operations, baby. You show up to the office. What do you do? Well, you probably do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Everyone's community is different. You're going to maybe post some content. Not every day, but some days you're going to DM some people. Monday to Friday, perhaps. You're going to go and respond to some questions. You're going to answer emails. You're going to maybe send out an email. All right? There's just different little operations you got to do each day. And... um. Every time I go on vacation, I vacation. I I, I got to do some operations. Uh, I don't really do too much operations. Sorry, I'm more like in the delegation management aspect of things now. But I spend like maybe one to two hours a day on this. Um, if I try to not do that, I just go crazy. And it's like, I, I need to work. Like I love work so much. I need to put at least an hour or two a day just to delegating things and managing things. Operations though, you're looking at when you're first getting started, like four or five hours a day until you can delegate and you can delegate pretty quickly, virtual assistant and things like this, but you can get four to five hours a day. You can get that down to one to two hours a day uh, pretty quickly. But the setup, my God, this can take like, this can take like, depending how quick you are, depending how detail oriented you are, you're from like 12 to 24 hours. Depending on how much you already have set up. It's just, it's the longest freaking all in one chunk. Boom. And, and the thing is with the setup, you can't do it hour here, hour there. You have to set everything up at once because then you lose track. Have you ever tried to like, follow some IKEA instructions and then put in like five minutes here or there into the IKEA instructions. No, you got to sit down and go through the entire instruction book in like one sitting, right? Otherwise you're never going to remember where you were when you pick back up. So the setup has to be done all at once. And I think a lot of people think they can just chip away at the setup. You cannot chip away at the setup. You're going to forget where you were. You have to go all in on the setup operations. Yeah. You can chip away. But a lot of you guys, yeah, you're like, yeah, you keep getting wrapped up and you restart each time. Exactly. That's a huge mistake. The setup, you guys, the setup is equivalent of a freaking rocket launch. Do you think that, by the way, SpaceX is doing a massive rocket launch tomorrow. They're going to be launching their biggest rocket ever tomorrow. I recommend checking that out. Um uh, do you think this rocket, when it launches, just like chips away at some little outputs of gas? Or do you think it freaking uses like 80% of its fuel in the first couple minutes? Because it uses 80% of its fuel in the first couple minutes. It goes all out, full throttle, pedal to the metal. Watch some rocket launch videos. That's 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 what you guys need to get inspired if you want to set something up properly. You have to go all out with it. Yeah? Cool. So that's the setup. And this right here, my friends, is the big picture. You set it up. It's a one-time setup. You don't have to set up ever again. And then you operate. You make stuff happen. You put out the content, you have some conversations, you work with some of your members, boom. And then phase three, you delegate 99% of it. And then the other rest of your time is spent you know, you're coming up with some ideas, brainstorming, working with your team, talking with your team, optimizing things. My favorite part of delegating is what I call uh, 
quarter inch turns. So every day I work with my team, I try and see where in our business can I stick a screwdriver and make a quarter inch turn to tighten things up a bit. Maybe it's an email that has like a lowercase t, it should be capital. Boom, quarter inch turn. Maybe one of the links is broken, got to fix the link. Boom, quarter inch turn. Maybe after somebody fills out a form, it just says, thank you for filling out the form. Where I could add a video that says, hey, thanks so much for filling out the form. Here's what to do next, right? Boom, it's a quarter inch turn. I'm constantly looking for these quarter inch turn opportunities. That's a note you guys want to write down. When you're operating on a regular basis or when you're delegating, especially, is you're looking for these quarter inch turns. Operations for the most part consists of content, conversations, and community members working with them. And the setup consists of your offers, multiple, because you're going to have a free one and a free and paid. Um, your offers, it's going to consist of your uh, actual community setup itself, just say community, and then acquisition process, and then retention tools, and potentially educational material you're going to educate your community members. Some community members don't need education. It's not that kind of a community. And if you do come up with educational material, it might just be community or educational material that your community gives you. Maybe they call oh, this is a really helpful article. This is a really cool video. And you can just curate the educational material via the community. So this, this is part of the setup. And then there's going to be like some other stuff like your email automations, your funnel, you're definitely going to need that because you're going to get people into the community. So your offers, funnel, the community. Um, conversation scripts, things like this. Um, other part, like branding. Naming, pricing, et cetera. The list is like long. It's literally 12, 24 hours of work. I can't list every, everything right here. That's a, a good amount. Yeah, we'll say platforms. Platforms for traffic. Sure. Cool. There we go. So do we now, yes or no, understand the high level big picture of how we're making 510K a month without selling anything? Yay or nay? Yeah. Cool. All right, well, what we're going to do is we're going to take a two-minute brain break because we've been going at this for an hour now. So I'm setting a timer on YouTube. Is there a two-minute funny timer? There we go. All right, two minutes. Go for it. Go take your break. I'll be back.
Perfect timing. All right, before we continue, I think I'm going to answer some questions. So if you have a question, throw it in the chat or the Q&A, sorry, put it in the Q&A box and I'll get it right now. Cool. John saying in membership mastery, which is here, Highly recommend going through this video. He says, um, you recommend we start between seven and $15 per month. I, here's, here's my pricing convention, if you will. I always recommend starting at such a low price that you give yourself runway for raising it. And this was one of my mistakes when I first launched. Here's why. I, I think I, I launched Contentpreneurs. I think I launched it at, I could be wrong, but I think I launched it at 27. 20 bucks was a different membership. I think I launched Contentpreneurs for 27. It might have been 20, but I doubt I did a Contentpreneurs at 20. I could be wrong. Sure, let's just say I launched Contentpreneurs between 20 and 27 bucks. Because I actually don't remember, but it was, it was something like that. For the first... I don't know, like 25 members or something. And then I made it 37 and I announced this. And every time I made an announcement, I got a big influx of sales. And then I made it 47 and I got another big influx of sales. And then I ran out of price increases because I don't want to really make it much higher than 47. I'm going to be raising it very soon here, but I, I was, I ran out of price increases and price increasing is like the easiest way to get signups. One of the easiest ways, although it does involve selling. So it kind of goes outside of the scope of this video, but I always recommend starting at a low price so that you give yourself runway to keep raising it, raising it and giving people fair warning. Hey, it's going up. Hey, it's going up. Hey, it's going, going up. You don't have to do it like $7 for the first 10 members. You can do it $7 for the first three days or something, you know, totally up to you. So John, whether you start at $7 or $1 or $15 doesn't matter. As long as you're giving yourself that runway up to 50, I think 50 is a sweet spot or even less 49. I say 50 on paper, just for easy math, but 49 psychologically so much more attractive. You guys right now were to offer me a membership for 49 bucks a month versus 50. I take the $49. It's not even 50 bucks. Not even 50 bucks. It's only 49 bucks. That was another regret I have is making my 47 and not 49. We've been 47 for so long, man. We should have been 49. You know why? What's $2 times 200? Exactly. 400 bucks. 400 bucks. I have not been collecting every month. How pissed would you be if some dude came and stole $400 from you every month? Well, how do you think I feel? I stole 400 bucks from myself. I didn't even see it. I didn't, I didn't even get it. Went to nowhere. You guys kept it. So might as well make it 49. Max out. That is like a very, 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 very sweet spot. So John, hopefully that answers your question. It doesn't matter how low you start as long as you ramp up. Uh, Shell says, in your experience, do you need a larger team slash most costs per month when you do big sales? Uh, no. Well, I, wait, hold on. Let me think about this further because I have a I have the same size team now, but we still do high ticket sales. If I didn't do high ticket sales at all and I just purely did monthly recurring revenue, would I would I need my sales reps? I guess not. So you wouldn't need sales reps. So I guess I mean the only staff you're saving is like you wouldn't need a sales rep. But the team wouldn't be that much bigger, that big, small. You might maybe one or two people, depending on how many sales reps you have. 
Yeah. For the for the monthly recurring model, like for the, this, this community model, you only need like I know virtual. We'll talk about this actually. This is is this. Is this today or tomorrow? This is tomorrow. We'll talk about this more tomorrow, but you you, you need a small team. Like it's a very small team. I'll tell you exactly who to hire for, how to hire for them and everything tomorrow. But yeah, it's you do you all you the only thing you're getting rid of is is the um sales reps. John says, What would you say is the best training for nailing the setup? I mean, you've I don't know if you've finished it yet, but membership mastery. Go through, go through the membership launch blueprint. Intro, day one, day two, day three, day four. It's all so much detail. Boom, right here. Um, tomorrow's session is not the same time. Tomorrow's session is 9 a.m. PST as per the agenda here. 9 a.m. PST, which is like noon Eastern. Um the other thing too for setup if you guys want like one-on-one hand holding assistance with everything here you can visit 14 minute call.com and you can schedule a call with uh, one of our head coaches and they can walk you through what it would look like if you want to work with us to set all this up with you side by side one-on-one okay thanks john for the question uh, anonymous attendee. I don't know who anonymous attendee is. Normally, I don't answer questions from anonymous attendees, but let's see what this one says. Curious, what is the percentage of free trial signups that opt out after the trial period? Good question. I don't have exact numbers, but I'd say 85% plus stick rate, but this is just for content printers. Very rarely does someone cancel the free trial. Very rarely. But that's because we've done a lot of things right. We've done a lot of things right prior to them even signing up. We do a lot of things right once they sign up. There's a lot to it. And we talk about that tomorrow on retaining. So tomorrow we'll go into retention tactics, how to prevent pretrial cancellations, et cetera. Cool. All right, let's get back into it. So picking your community topic. By the way, before we continue, has this been a good use of your guys' time so far? Some aha moments? You're learning? Yes? Yep. Cool. All right. Well, as long as Stuart is learning, I'm, I'm happy. Let's continue. Picking your community topic. We're going to breeze through this one because it's not too complicated. What you want to ask yourself is three questions. What can I talk about for 10 hours nonstop? Post in the chat right now. What can you talk about for 10 hours nonstop? Post in the chat. What do we got? Qigong. There we go. Close to Cal. There we go. Very true, Kelly. Stephanie, healthy and lifestyle. Yeah. Okay. Next question is, do I want to talk about this every day? Yes or no? And the other question is, when I do talk about this, do people, uh, does, does it genuinely, actually forget this, let's just say, does this topic interest some other people? Boom. Like, i.e., is there already a community out there of people who are interested in this? If so, cool. 
pretty much that simple. What can I talk about? But I want to talk about this every day. And does this topic interest people? Now, here's the cool thing that I love about community, this community membership model versus the high ticket space. Because in high ticket space, I'm going to quiz my some of my top clients here. There's only four things that people buy in high ticket. And this does not apply to community memberships. Community membership, you can make monthly recurring revenue off any topic as long as it hits this. But in the high ticket space, what are they? What are the four areas? Health, wealth, money, freedom, almost. Okay, who's going to get it right? One, two, three, four. There's four. All right. Let's just work together here. Relationships, that's one. Good job, Shaw. Pain relief, it's another one. Good job, uh, Stephanie. Um, beauty, who said that? Edith, beauty enhancement, yeah. And then the other one is money. Cool, done. There you go. You guys are all kind of close. If you're not selling one of these things in high ticket, no one, like any, think about this. Would you pay 10 grand, yes or no? to have the perfect soulmate for the rest of your life. Obviously you would, everyone would, we're designed for that. We can't, we can't say no. If you're saying no, you're lying. I know you would. Would you pay 10 grand plus to be completely pain-free for the rest of your life? Of course you would, I know you would, don't lie. Would you pay 10, 10 grand or more to be the most beautiful version of yourself possible for the rest of your life? And look younger and yeah, look, look super sexy all the time? Of course you would. This is typically like, Weight loss slash muscle gains. Of course you would. People do. Would you pay 10 grand to be able to make 10 grand every day like that? Boom, of course you would. Right? These are all proven. They're kind of not, you don't even need to think about them. They're so obvious. Nothing outside of these four is very obvious. Anything outside of these four, you got to really, 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 really think like, shit, like would someone actually pay for that? But you don't have to think about it with these four. They're already time tested. However, and th sorry, the issue with this too is a lot of people are like, I, I can't like seem to fit anything into one of these four things. Well, there's a way of doing that, but I cover that inside of my high ticket um, workshop that I did in Content Printers. I'll show it to you right now because it's freaking awesome. Um, create a product, create a high ticket offer. If you watch this, I show you how to, hi Edith, and hi Trevor, and hi Lucy. Uh, I show you how to do it there. But cool thing with the community is you can pick any topic. You could have a community on Pokemon. You could have a community on, let's give me some examples, on what Stuart's, uh, Stuart's doing lawn mowing, but Stuart's doing like a lawn mowing business. His actually fits into a high category, high ticket category. And if, you're, if your thing actually fits into one of these, you should have a high ticket upsell, high ticket upgrade. But again, that's a whole nother video. But you could have um, a Pokemon membership, Pokemon community. You could have a uh, juicing, a juicing one, just people who love juice. What else we got? Give me some ideas. You could have like a, uh, a walking community, a meditation community, dog care, dog training. Hell yeah. Manifestation. Frick yeah. Digital nomad. Yeah. So, and one, one easy way to see if it's like legit is just go on, uh, go on Reddit. Like let's, let's take manifestation, right? You're like, Oh, can, can I really create a community or manifestation? Okay. Let's go manifestation Reddit and just see if it's a thing. Is there a group called, how do you even, yeah. Our law of attraction. Boom. How many members? How many members are in here? How do you see this? 253,000 members. 253,000 members. Is this community paid? No, but that's besides the point. They could easily upsell people into a free trial for their paid community. 
where the leader or the coaches in the community could work personally with them to help them out. Boom. Insane. What else? Digital Nomad? Just go on here. Digital Nomad. Reddit. How many? Two million! Holy smokes! Two million members. Okay, guys, let's pretend. Put yourself in, in one of these guys' shoes, right? They're a member of Digital Nomad. Let's say you're in this community. You're loving it. And you're seeing all this really cool stuff. By the way, Reddit's UI is so ugly compared to school. This is such a beautiful UI compared to Reddit. Anyways, come here. You're, you're in here. You're posting. You're getting help. You're loving it. You're attending like some maybe like some monthly calls or whatever with some of the um, coaches. And then every now and then they're like, hey, we got a free trial to work with us inside our digital nomad premium program, which is 49 bucks a month where we help you become a digital nomad. Yes or no, would you want to sign up for that? If you're like, you're loving this free one and then they're offering 49 bucks a month to help you really succeed a lot faster, would you pay 49 bucks to upgrade? Yeah, you would. Because you've already proven yourself as being one of the top people. Right? And the cool thing about school too is it shows you who the top people are. The leaderboards. Boom. Shout out Vanda, Teresa, Alana, Raj, Sandra, Kelly, Kristen, Amy, Nina, Stuart. Stuart, look at you, man. Boom. Making proud. John, you're on there. Kelly's on there. This is all time. Kelly's on there. Jamie's on there. Gary, Rilka, Stuart's climbing it. Stefania. Boom. Tally's been crushing lately. Cool. Yeah, you're going to have access to the recording. Yep. So when you set this stuff up properly, it's uh, it, it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter what your community topic is because as long as you can talk about it for 10 hours nonstop and you want to talk about it every, every day and it already interests other people, it's good to go. Boom. The only, like... The only thing I think like wouldn't work is if it's like, I mean, there's some obscure freaking groups of people, man. Like I think almost anything could work. Like even something as weird as like dandelions. Like if you're really into dandelions, there's probably a community out there of people who are into dandelions. I mean, it might be like wild herbs or something on Reddit, but there's a group for like mushrooms. Like wild mushrooms, like reishi and chaga and things like that. Um, I knew a guy that was in a community for hens. Yeah, there we go. Dandelion winemakers. Yeah. So you can be, don't worry about being like super, super, super niche because in fact, if you're super, super niche, you're like the only person out there talking about it. Like uh, for a while, I, feel, I think I'm one of the only people actually out there right now. I'm one of the only, I don't know if I'm the only, but I'm one of the only people, which is why I'm able to get so much attention. Because I'm one of the only people who talk about how to make gains on a fruitarian diet. I say, um, I help vegans build muscle on a fruit-based diet. I have a Facebook group called Fruit-Based Gains. Fruit-Based Vegans, it's called. Fruit-Based Vegan Community. I don't know anyone else talking about fruit-based veganism and building muscle. Fruit, I think I should change the name to fruit-based gains, but it's fruit-based vegans, whatever. Oops. Point is, go super niche with your community. Because they're gonna you want them to feel like, wow, there's nowhere else I can go to get this kind of help. There should be no, they should feel like there's nowhere else they can go. In fact, let's do a let me pop quiz you guys right now. Could you guys, yes or no, go anywhere that you know of right now to Learn what I'm teaching right here. Who else is teaching you about this sort of stuff? About communities, MRR. You guys know anyone off the top of your head? There's, I'm sure there's people out there, but it's like not coming to your top of your head, right? So that's how niche it is. I now if I said like, oh, I want to help you um just make money. It's so boring. It's so broad. Right? Or it's like, I want to help you eliminate all pain. I want to help you get healthy. A lot, I see a lot of you guys come in. You guys are coming in. You're like, Ted, I want to help people get healthy. I'm like, okay, that's like me saying I want to help people make money. Like, nobody cares. 
if someone came to you and said, Hey, I want to help you get healthy. You're going to be like, Hey, I don't care. But someone came up to you and be like, Oh, Thomas, I noticed your um, neck is kind of bent to one side a bit. Uh, do you mind if I take a look? Oh yeah, I can definitely see. I can definitely see that if with a couple of quick exercises, you can actually straighten your neck out and correct it and eliminate those migraines that you mentioned you were having. Thomas would be like, wow, sweet. Yeah, I'm definitely interested. Because it's so specific to his thing. I'm not saying he has a thing, but if he did have a thing, a neck kink, you know? There could be one for neck kinks. Neck kink eliminator group. Boom. There we go. So that's it. Community topic chosen. You want to be the go-to place so people think, I don't know where else I'd go to get this kind of information. That is a retention tactic in and of itself. Okay. Next is actually honing in on the niche. So we picked the topic. Now for the niche. Um, my general recommendation for this is to let your niche reveal itself to you. Let your niche reveal itself to you. And your, your community is going to change for sure. It's going to change with you like a hive mind. Do you guys know what a hive mind is? Let's get the Google definition. It's really cool. A notional entity consisting of a large number of people who share their knowledge or opinions with one another regarded as producing either uncritical conformity or collective intelligence. Collective intelligence. That's it. So your niche is going to change with you. Like, just let it happen. I've seen this play out in other communities I'm a part of. Like, the community starts out and everyone is so, like, gung-ho on this thing. And then they realize that like, actually there's like a few missing parts to this and we actually need to incorporate this as well. So now the community is like more like holistic in a sense. And then the community realizes that, well, these things that we first had, they're kind of useless and we only need this latter part that we just got. Then the community becomes like more pure. You know what I mean? And then the community initially maybe started off as like, oh, we're for everyone. We welcome everyone. Then eventually it gets to a point where it's like, no, we're only like, we are like the best of the best, only like the elites. You know, like it, it shifts, it changes. And you're part of that. It's a really cool experience. So I don't recommend getting so caught up on the niche. I know a lot of people are like, what should my niche be? What should my niche be? What should my niche be? Fuck the niche. Focus on your topic and let your niche reveal itself to you. Don't worry about the niche. Let it. Reveal itself. It's going to change. We changed. We were, we were vegan creators. And then you know what happened? People like Stuart started joining. People like, uh, I don't even know if Thomas has joined. I don't even know if Thomas is vegan. Tom, T Thomas joined. Uh, we got freaking a bunch of other people joining. And they're not even vegan. I'm like, you know what? We're helping so many non-vegans. Let's just focus on content. Lucy's not even vegan. It's like, why are, we, why are we calling ourselves vegan creators when we can help content preneurs? Right? And the only rule we have regarding veganism is like, as long as... Shell's not even vegan. <laughs> the, only, the only rule we have now is like, as long as your program or product doesn't promote the uh, abuse or consumption of animals, we're good. You know, that's just like a moral ethical thing. But it's got nothing... Like the, what I teach has nothing to do with veganism. So I might as well open it up. And like, I needed the hive mind to help me discover that. Right? But if I go so caught up on the niche, I may have never started. So I, I picked veganism to begin with, and I let it reveal itself to me. And now it's like, oh, it's actually contentpreneurs. And I've been working very closely with Sam from school and the, the, uh, the CEO. Oops. And I'm finding he's doing the same thing. He's like, he's still trying to, he's, he's not like, yeah, we were just here the other day. He's not so caught up on the niche. He's letting it reveal itself to him. He's like, at the start, he's like, school is this. And he's like, no, school is this. And school is for these people. No, 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 school is for these people. And he's like, always constantly trying to redefine like what school is and who it's for. It's really cool to see. And that, that determines the kind of features they release. So 
in terms of honing in on the niche, let it pick the topic and let the niche reveal itself to you. You can be broad in general at the start, but uh, don't don't feel like you need to be like so attached to it. In terms of the best platform, if I haven't made it obvious by now, it's definitely school. Highly, highly, highly recommend school. You guys are already on school, I'm sure, if you're on the Zoom call. But if you're not on school, like you have, if you haven't even created an account or anything on here, actually, maybe some of you haven't because you're just attending the workshop, uh, definitely recommend joining contentpreneurship.com. It's a free community of mine. I'll post it right in the chat there. Content, you can just go to contentpreneurship.com as well. It'll redirect. So that's definitely the best platform. And I'll show you just a couple quick reasons why. Number one, it gives you everything you need, which is the community. Number one, you see people posting discussion, right? Allows you to break that discussion up into different categories, which is pretty sweet. And then it allows you to have educational material. So you can make look however you want. It can be text-based. It can be video-based. They've now added this really cool editor to make it like all pretty good photos and stuff too. It's really, really, really sweet now. And then it allows you to do live calls like we're doing right now. So you go to Contentpreneurs, go to the calendar. Boom. It's happening right now. It's called Make 5K Month Without Selling. So people can just click here. Boom, and access their dang. There you go. And then if you're on the community feed, you actually get notified, hey, it's happening right now. So it's freaking perfect. And then shows you your all your all your members right here. Bang. What's up, Shell? And then leaderboards. Shows you who's rising to the top. Bingo bango. And tomorrow you're gonna see why this is really important to be able to see your leaders. Very, very important. So I don't know any other platform that does what I just showed you, and I've tried them all. In fact, I'll show you a few that you can check out yourself if you want to do the test yourself. But you can check out Podia. Try for, if you can do 14 day trials on all these. You try a certain this. This is what I'm so confident in school that I'm happily showing you the competitors because you're going to try them and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, school is actually actually try school last. Don't don't taint don't ruin the rest of these so easily. Just try school last. Uh, Podia, Circle, Mighty Networks. What else we got? Um, I think one of them is called like Searchy. Um, oh, Kajabi. Oh, God. Kajabi. You can try ClickFunnels. There's probably a bunch more. Shell saying Heartbeat. I've never heard of Heartbeat. But uh, yeah. There's a few more. Learn Worlds. Yeah, there we go. Thanks. Perfect. Learn worlds. There's so many, but yeah, at the very end of the list, try school at the very end and uh, let me know what you think. When test driving new cars too, I always recommend them like probably shouldn't test drive a Tesla first because it's going to ruin every other car. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Teachable. If you test drive a car, uh, a Tesla first, it's going to ruin every other test drive you do. Specific. Boom. Cool. So that's that. And guys, I like I said, I just got back from hanging out with the guys for like 10 days in California, and they have some amazing things in the pipeline. They've already made so many adjustments. They've made it like while I was there, they're already shipping some really cool features. But coming up in the future, we're going to be seeing subscription, in-house subscription billing, landing pages. We have an iPhone app. The iPhone app's already out, but they're going to like release like a better version in the next 30 days. Classroom's going to be even, classroom's going to be so freaking cool. I wish I could share with you right now what the classroom's going to look like. So stoked. I can't even, I should just stop talking because I'm going to ruin it. And then Android app for the Google Pixel weirdos like me. Native video hosting. Right now you got to host it on YouTube and then link it, which is no big deal, but it's nice to upload something directly to the platform. And then slight improvements to the calendar, which will be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so that's the best platform, hands down, in my opinion. But I do recommend you try these other ones just to, just so you know what's out there. In terms of acquiring new members, 
Well, before we finish with this, this is the last part of today. Do we have any questions so far? Let's check the Q&A box. Tomorrow will be recorded. Yes. Uh, David says, what about Learn Worlds? Have you compared it with school? A clients of mine have, yeah. And they just said it's it's overkill. There's just Learn Worlds might be great if you if you're like a really big company like uh Apple or you know, you just have a big company with like millions of dollars coming in. Like if you're like a pick a big company, I don't know, name a big brand, Nike, Adidas. Learn Worlds might be good for that because it's it's you can white label everything. But it's overkill. Like you, it's not simple to use. And the community feature sucks compared to school, which is what we're all about. Learn Worlds, as you can tell by the name, is more for learning. School is more community focused. School was initially, hence the name school, was initially also with learning. But then Sam, the CEO, Realize that the power was actually in the community itself, not in the educational aspect. Because people learn from each other. They're learning from each other, not uh, and they learn learn by doing. Not through just sitting there watching videos. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions before we finish up? Okay, well, let's get it. Acquiring new members. I wrote some notes for this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. Here's my suggestion for acquiring new members. By the way, you want you want a free community and you want a paid community. That's important distinction to make here. You want two communities actually. A free one and a paid one. You could combine the two. Oh yeah, that's another factor. Facebook. Sure, thanks. Facebook group. You could have a, a you could have a community where everyone's in there. And then the only difference is the people who pay get access to like uh, these Zoom calls. But I think it's kind of weird talking with a bunch of people who aren't paying as well as the people who are paying. I like content printers because I know if you post in here, I can like give you awesome feedback. But in here, if you post something, it's free. Like the best I can say is like a couple words and then I could maybe like send you like a link or something or... You know, the free community, this this is like a prospecting pool. So the goal here is to bring people from this community, get them to upgrade into a paid one, right? Once you're here, I'm not trying to upsell you anything. I'm like just trying to keep you happy and make you get results. Because when you get results, like Gary, you think Gary's going to quit anytime soon? Hell no, he's crushing, right? So when people get results, they don't want to leave. No one's like, oh, I'm already getting results now. I'm going to leave now. No, like they're like, I'm getting results and I want to keep going higher. I'm going to stick around. So I can, I can just really put my focus on this feed and be like, okay, hey, like help these people get results, help these people get results, help these people get results. Whereas this community, I need to kind of get them to see like, yo, do you realize what you're missing over in the other community? Like, come on, like we got so much good stuff over there. So I like to keep them separated. That's the first thing. When it comes to acquiring new members, you want to start off in a free community and then bring over to your paid. So I recommend for both your paid and your free community, you start with three friends, bring them in for free. Chances are you already have three friends that like the same thing that you like. And if you don't have three friends in real life, I'm sure you know three people online that are interested in the same thing you're interested in. Get three people in there for free and start the conversation. Start and talk about what works, what doesn't work. Slash best practices. 
So let's say you all have a, uh, I don't know, let's go back up here. You have a, what do I know something about? Walking group, okay? You might talk, have a, I might be actually down to join a walking community. That's pretty sweet. Best practices. I have a freaking walking treadmill, which I'm actually not using right now because I'm out of practice. I've been gone for a little while. I have a walking treadmill on my standing desk. That's the best practice. If you love walking, you should get a walking treadmill, right? Boom, look at that. I shut it off because I'm too in the zone now. Best practice, get a walking treadmill. I could get a lot of people to get a walking treadmill, especially if you have a freaking community, and boom. Uh, what doesn't work? So these certain, these certain shoes, they give me blisters. What does work? These shoes, they don't give me blisters, right? I, we can instantly start benefiting from each other, just sharing what works, what doesn't work. Do you know Mr. Beast, the YouTuber? Who's like Uber, 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 probably the top YouTuber in the world now? Yeah, when he started out, he has so many interviews talking about this, but him and two other guys would be on the phone every day together for like four or five hours, geeking out and sharing what they're learning. They're like, oh, we should use this thumbnail. We realize when you use a brighter thumbnail, it's better, but you can't go too bright because then it's washed out. And we should use short titles, but the titles can't be too short because then it doesn't get the point across. And they can't have like periods in them and the thumbnail needs to have like a, a face in the thumbnail. That works really well. I finally, if I, the first 10 seconds of the video, if I do this, it gets longer retention on the videos. This thing just went viral. Did you see that? You're just constantly sharing ideas with one another. Imagine, would you type a yes in the chat right now if you would love to go back and listen to all those conversations Mr. Beast had with those YouTubers when he was growing up and growing his channel. That'd be insane. So valuable. So valuable. But if you have a community, people can see that. It instantly becomes valuable and they just join. Like I can go right now. I can go to, let's say I want to go to school and I, I want to check out Sam's post because he's like super smart guy. I go here and I want to search for all his, I can see the search for all his contributions in the school community. Like all his different posts that he's done, right? Or I can just see the different posts that he's made. So now I get to see all every post he's ever made. And that can keep scrolling and 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 just learn so much from this guy. You know how helpful this is now? And I only get access to this because I'm in the community. This alone is a selling feature. You know, like if if I could bundle something up and could be like, hey, who wants to see all of Sam Ovens' school posts? Five bucks. I can like sell this as a PDF almost. It's so valuable. I can go to his other, you know, his other communities that he's in and see, see what he's posted. Right? So you can do this in content printers. Go here. Let's go Yelena. Members. Um, profile. Contemporaries, let's see just her post. Boom, everything Elise ever posted. Look at that. If you went through and you watched all these or you read everything she's posted, you'd learn so much. So freaking helpful. Yeah. Why, why am I telling you that? Because when it comes to starting your community, you and your three friends can generate a lot of content just by posting what's working, what doesn't work, and best practices that you found. That simple. So when new members join, they're going to be like, oh, wow, this looks dope. I'm going to join. There's already something happening here. If you don't have anyone there, it's a dead zone. So get just three, just get three friends. In fact, Sam made a post about this. I'll try and find it. It's called True Regulars. Yes, read this post. Copy link. I'll paste it right here. Okay, read this. I'll also post in the chat for those of you who are live. Bam. Talks about how to get 10 true regulars, and it says start with three. So there you are. Then do this. 
write a list of 11 problems people have and 11 things people really want within your, within your niche slash topic. This was one of the most profitable exercises I've ever done in my business. And no one taught me to do it. I just had to do it because I need to get clear on what the frick I was actually going to talk about. And I realized that people only want to solve problems and get shit. And they want to get what they want. And they want to solve problems. So I wrote a big list. I wrote a list of like 20 things. But I recommend you start with a list of 11. Okay. Once you do that... You're then going to make a freebie, like a PDF, make a free PDF slash Google Doc, targeting one of each. So like, let's say the problem is, give me a problem. Give me a problem in the chat. What's the problem you want to solve? What's the problem you want to help your people solve? Okay, let's say being overweight. Perfect. That's a problem. Being overweight is a problem. What do they want? They want a flat stomach, right? So we'd say something like how to get a flat stomach in less than seven days without, well, another problem there is probably cravings, right? How to get a flat stomach within seven days without ever experiencing crave. How to get... I word this right. How to drop 10 pounds in less than 10 days without hunger or cravings so you can look your best by summer. Sounds dope. You drop 10 pounds in less than 10 days. Wow, that's cool. I'll show you how to get a perfectly flat toned stomach before summer so you can look amazing on the beaches. Or, let's get rid of the problem. We need to eliminate uh, the problem. How to get a perfectly flat, sexy, how to get a perfectly flat and sexy stomach by summer so you're not embarrassed to walk around in your bikini. Boom! Right? We factor in embarrassing the bikini, it's a problem, into what they want, which is being sexy. So what I just said would make a perfect freebie. So you make a free PDF talking about those two things, what they want slash what they don't want, put it into one, uh, and then tell them, hey, the only way to get it is by joining the free community. So you say, hey, who wants this thing? They're like, me, I want it. Like, okay, cool. Well, here's the link for it. It happens to be, it happens to be right here in the classroom. Right? We I give away my, my piece of clarity. It's an hour and 40 minute training. And it's free. You just need to be in the community to get it. Okay? So now you're growing your free community. You guys with me so far? Say yes. This all makes sense? We're growing our free community here first. That's the purpose here. Then we're going to grow the paid one after. Cool. So then what you do is with the other 10 problems and desires people have, you do a live workshop for free, helping people. Just go live in your free community slash wherever you want, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Just do, do live workshops. Once a week, once every other week, it doesn't matter. Just you need The purpose is to collect these assets. These workshops will become assets for you. When someone comes into my community and they see all our, our, our workshops, I go look at all these assets. These are all live workshops are done. They're so freaking valuable for people. So you do 10 other workshops over the next 10 weeks helping people. And every time you do, guess what you do? At the end of them, the end of every workshop, you make people an offer. You offer them a free 14-day trial for your community where you can work with them more personally. So let's pretend that we're at a free, this is a free event right now. None of you guys have paid anything. At the end of this, I could be like, hey, if you found this really helpful and you want help implementing everything I just showed you, all of the above, where we sit down and work together for like five hours nonstop, private one on one. Or no, that's a high ticket off pitch. Let me, I'm, I'm still trained to pitch high ticket. I'd say at the end of this, if you want to 
join my free community. No, Rick, sorry. If you want to join my private coaching community where we work with you three times a week to develop your skills, to be in a, a profitable content preneur, we'll work on your content, your offer, your, your build out your community, your branding, blah, blah, blah. We'll do that all with you for 14 days for free. And at the end, only if you absolutely love it and only if you're getting results, then you can continue to pay and it's just 47 bucks a month. Like I make you a no-brainer offer like that, right? Why would they say no, especially if I help them so much? I, the, the, the human psychology doesn't really let you say no if I A, did a good job here and then B, made a really, really good pitch. So that's all you got to think about. How do I do a really, really good job with the workshop. How do I really help them with the workshop? And I have workshops on how to do a good workshop. So you don't need to worry about that. You can go watch one of those. And then how do you pitch it at the end? Yeah. Then after you've done that a few times, you, after you've done that 10 times, you start promoting each workshop for free if someone wants to attend on a 14-day free trial. So, or seven day for trial, whatever this, and this is exactly what we did today for this workshop. I said, Hey, this workshop, as you guys probably saw the emails I got sent out, I said, you can either pay 49 bucks and get it here, or you can get it for free on a seven day trial. Did anyone here in the live chat do uh, did sign up for the free trial or the 49 bucks? Or were you already all a member of content preneurs? Because we had a, like, I don't know, maybe 14 signups or something. 14 day free trial signups. Plus we had like another few people pay the 49 bucks. Yeah, a lot of you guys are, a lot of you guys are actually showed up are already members, which is interesting. Shell signed up today. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So really simple. Hey, here's this workshop that addresses a problem that you're probably having, which is, making sales sucks and helping get something you want, which is reliable monthly income. Right. And I said, if you want to attend this workshop, it's either 49 bucks or it's completely for free on a seven day trial. Boom. And then you got to understand that bottom line is if you want to acquire new members, Attention on social media is going to always lead to more signups if you do it right. But if you don't have an audience, you can always borrow one. You borrow one. The whole purpose of an audience on social media, by the way, is to get people into your freaking free community. So if you don't have that audience, borrow one. I'll talk about this a bit more tomorrow, but borrowing is really simple, by the way, if your content's actually good and you have good interpersonal relationship skills, like really good communication skills. Borrowing is very simple if you have these two things. Your content has to be good first. Because so if you're going to borrow someone's audience, that person's name is on the line. Their reputation is on the line. So if, let's say you reach out to me and you're like, oh, Ted, can you promote my thing? And I don't do my due diligence and I just don't even look at your content and I go tell my people, go check, check, uh, go check out this person. Then people go check it out and your content sucks. It's like, I'm embarrassed now. Like, crap, it, like, it makes me look really bad. So someone I've promoted a few times was one of my clients. Her content's really, really good. Like, I genuinely, I'm like, well, this is actually good content. So I've given her a few shout outs. Um, it's real ca. Content's really, really good. It looks good. It's helpful. It's right to the point. And so I, I give her a few shout outs. No brainer collaboration. She didn't have to ask me. If she did ask me, cool, no problem. She's got crazy before and afters. I got to tell her to post her before and afters. Because all you see is this like blonde fit chick or whatever. But she used to be like, not like that at all. She's got crazy before and afters. Oh, here's, here's some. Boom. Boom, boom. And then she... Went on a fruit cleanse, now lives on just fruits and vegetables, pretty much, I think. I mean, she probably eats some cooked food a little bit, but mostly raw. And then, yeah, she helps women do the same, get rid of bloating. So I promote her. 
because content's really good. Uh, yeah, so number one, create good content first and foremost, meaning your content should always be targeting one of the problems people have or targeting one of the, the desires they have and you're either helping them eliminate the problem or helping them get one of the desires or both. And then if you got into good interpersonal skills, you make them a deal. You make them a deal. So what I did is I reached out to a uh, influencer back in the day. I said, hey, let's do this event. I'll give you 50%. She said, okay, deal, done. We both made a lot of money. Really that simple. Because she checked out my content. She really liked it. And the deal was great, 50%. And her stuff's completely in alignment with my stuff. So, yeah, that's, 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 really, that's really how you do that. Um, but I have a, a very in-depth training on that. If you're interested in borrowing an audience, I have a full-on training on that. Inside of school, there's a much must-watch how to get a hundred times more people knowing about you using the Dream 100. It's right here. Post this in the chat if you're interested. Cool. So today we covered a lot. And we're just about a two hour mark. I think we're good. We covered the power of community MMR, covered the big picture. Covered picking your community topic. We covered uh, honing in your niche, the best platform, acquiring new members, and a bunch more. Happy to do, uh, well, let's talk about tomorrow. Retention tactics for actually keeping those members, building out your team, managing your community, how to get your first 10 paying members. And then the roadmap for getting your first 200 members in the next year. That's all going on tomorrow and more. But before we leave, let's do some Q&A. And we'll get to it. Also, if you do need any help with this, or if you would like one-on-one -on -one private help with this, with myself and my team, you can go to 14minutecall.com and you can schedule a call with one of our head coaches and we'll walk you through uh, the roadmap showing you what it would look like to work together on building out everything that we just talked about. Helping you come up with your offers, your community itself, your custom sales process, your messaging, your conversation scripts, your funnel, your PDFs, just doing it all with you on Zoom, like sharing the screen, clicking around with you, spending a good couple of days setting everything up with you. If you want that kind of assistance, 14minutecall.com, just for a um, kind of like an overview glance call, see what it's all about. It's very, very helpful. Mm, okay, so Shell saying Facebook groups versus school. Facebook groups don't really allow you to easily share educational material. So it's very hard to indoctrinate, if you will, your com new community members with the way you think. Because they come to the Facebook community, it's all a bunch of noise, a bunch of distractions popping up messages popping up. Facebook's like ding, 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 it's all over the place. They can't really focus. If you do a video on, do, if you do a video on there, the chances of them watching a full video on Facebook is so slim because the distractions is everywhere. So it's very hard to indoctrinate new, new members. And ultimately that's what you want to do. You want to get them thinking the way you think, because if people think the way you think and they see the world, the way you see the world, when they hear what your program and they hear about your upgrade, your paid membership, in your paid community, you can be like, oh my God, it's a no-brainer. I have to do it. But if you don't get people thinking like that, then they're going to be like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe it's not for me. But that's, you know, that's BS. You know, it is perfect for them. You just got to like show them. The only way to show them is with video and you can host video in school very, very easily. So that's the main difference between Facebook groups and school. Not to mention you can email all your school members in one click. Bam. John uh, says, are you putting your three friends in the paid group or free group? Both. You're not going to charge your friends. Get them in there for free. T Thomas, do you have a template for getting awesome testimonials? Yeah, I do have an exact test template, but um, off the top of my head, 
I could be wrong, but it's something along the lines of what was your life like? Okay, first off, before you can get into exact specifics, just find testimonials that you already like online and send it to them. Be like, hey, could you make a testimonial like this? You can be like, hey, I know this is for another coach, but could you make it like this? Or if you really like testimonial, just take what you like about it, turn it into like a fill in the blank framework, and then be like, hey, could you like roughly answer these few questions? Um, in terms of a testimonial, though, I like to ask, like, uh, what was your life? Like, what problem were you dealing with before signing up? What made you want to sign up? What was the experience like? And then how is your life better off now since? And then what would you say to anyone who's thinking about also signing up, someone who, who might be on the fence? If you cover those pieces, Testimony is going to be awesome. A referral link for content entrepreneurs, that is something that we are in the process of creating right now. We've had a lot of people reach out and ask us for that, which is very cool. So we are going to launch that, I'd say, hopefully this coming week. I don't see why it would take longer than a week for us to get that done. But at the moment, we do not have a referral link, unfortunately. But thanks for asking. We have a... a yeah, we do not. Coming soon. We'll make an announcement. Thanks for reminding me. Um, if you guys have any, any other questions, post them in the Q&A. Uh, Lucy has a suggestion. Lucy, what's your suggestion? Oh, Lucy, we have to uh, change the time, by the way, that you booked, because the time you booked is like going to be 3 a.m. for me. So we'll have to make that switch, but I'll DM you about that. Just wanted to let you know, so I don't forget. Oh yeah, that's, that's good too. Uh, that's if you want a written one, um, yeah. Yeah, if you want written testimonials, you can just write it for them. Uh, they, they could even speak it, but I think getting people to read a script is quite difficult, but you could write it for them. They could approve it if you want a written one. Or you could just write it for them and be like, hey, if you just roughly say something like this, that would be good. Yeah, totally. That's a good one. That works definitely like a charm. People do that for their uh, book intro intros too. They can be like a really good introduction for a book, like a freaking three pages by like Donald Trump or something. And Donald Trump never actually wrote the intro, but someone just got him to like give him the thumbs up. Yeah. Anywho. Um, so that's that for today. Thanks so much. I'll see y'all's tamale at 9 a.m. PST, which is 12 o'clock Eastern. I think Stuart's going to be sleeping, but we'll, um, we'll have him here in spirit. All right. Ciao, ciao. Thanks so much. Oh, I'm so bad at this. Before we go, can you just like comment or post in the chat one thing that you really, really, really learned from today? Like what was your big aha, big takeaway, little gem? I find that when you share a gem, it gets instilled deeper. And when you share a gem, it reminds someone else of the thing. Like, oh yeah, that was like really, really freaking important. If you could share what that is, that would be so helpful for you, for everyone in the audience, and for me as well. Because I'd be like, oh yeah, I should talk about that more next time. What can you talk about for 10 hours? Set up full throttle, not little bits. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big one. The setup is cannot chip away at that thing. That needs to be all at once. Thank you, Juniper. Focus on giving away free trials, not selling. Yes, game changer, right? Screw selling, man. Just give away the free trials. Yes, free stuff feels so much better. Engage conversations. Your exact niche will come. Just get started. Yes, group memberships don't require sales. Yeah. Sweet, right? Paradigm shifting stuff here. The funnel to make the person end up into the paid membership. What's up, Fran? Yeah. 
fun to make the person end up in the paid membership. Free workshops to free community is what I want to work on lead paid. Cool. Cool, cool. Super fun. Thanks so much for attending. And I'll see y'all's tamale. Peace. Adios. Lates. Bye.